All right, and welcome back. This is going to be a double interview, I guess a uh, triple interview. We had the interview earlier with the, uh, the father of the 11-year-old who was tased. But right now it's going to be time for the king from Lord of the Rings, Vigo Mortensen, called into the Alex Jones radio show this morning, and this is what he had to say. We are joined by someone who's actually on set, and we appreciate him taking time off uh, to come on for some humanitarian uh, purposes in a film uh, that he's promoting, uh, dealing with just unbelievable horse slaughter, but he's also dealing with a lot of other social uh, issues, and that's uh, Vigo of, of course, Lord of the Rings, Vigo Mortensen of so many uh, huge films. I am a giant fan. My wife is a huge fan. Everybody I know is a huge fan, uh, and he uh, uh, joins us. Uh, where do you join us from, sir? I am uh, back in California first okay. time in, in many months. I'm uh, actually at a photo lab. I'm working on that. Uh, I have a publishing company, too, and I'm uh, fine-tuning some images for a new publication of ours. Yeah, I knew that you'd just been on a plane recently and then we're doing some shoots. Well, it's great to have you with us. Thank you. Thank you for coming on. There's so much to so much to talk about. I know that you just um, were given the Dennis Hopper Award at the AMFM Festival. Mm. Yeah, that was, a, that was a big honor and it was, uh, it was a lot of fun. The AMFM uh, inaugural festival down in Cathedral City by Palm Springs. Uh, um, it, was a, it was a good event. A lot of really interesting artists and... Uh, Thoughtful people and people know how to have a good time too. It was uh, probably the most unpretentious film festival or award ceremony I've ever been to. Um, I think it has a great future. I think it's real, real, real artists are going to uh, go more and more to that festival. I think. Well, I appreciate you coming on the broadcast to talk about uh, independent festivals, independent film, music. I know you're a huge supporter of that. Uh, wh what is your view on the growth of independent culture? Well, it's always been there and it's always going to be there. It's just uh, how much attention it gets. You know, when people don't hear about it very much, they think it's dead or they think, uh, you know, artists have sold out or something. But <clears throat> there's people making you know, original art all the time, interacting with each other. The great thing about a, something like the AM, FM festival down there is that it uh, wasn't just about movies. It was about photographers and painters, sculptors, writers. And there were these um, gatherings where people would uh, be on stage or in different venues talking about their artwork and, and a lot of getting a lot of ideas from other people working in different uh, you know, in a different medium, that can inspire you a lot. I mean, I'm I'm someone who I think that the reason that they that they honored me was uh, not just because I was a friend of Dennis uh, Hopper's and had worked with him in a couple of movies, but um, but because we had a life, you know, a long friendship um, uh, where we shared a lot of ideas about painting and art and work together and that, not just acting and. Um, you know, Dennis was always uh, curious, even towards the end of his life. He would always want to go see a new artist show or a new independent movie. He was, he was curious, you know, and curiosity is something that we all have as kids. Uh, it's something that either gets beaten out of you or you somehow become ashamed or are led to be ashamed of the way you draw or your ideas or dressing up or playing make-believe and all that sort of stuff. And, and I think the function that artists have is to to keep people childlike in a positive way, you know, to keep open to the world. And I think that apart from traveling to different countries or different communities, different parts of your city, uh, I think that art is is the, one of the greatest anti-war and anti-poverty weapons there are. When your eyes are open and you see how other people live and how other people think and create, it's a lot less likely that you're going to be uh, convinced by your your army captain or your president or your politicians that uh, it's a good idea to go bomb this or that country. It's a good idea to forget about this or that community or this uh, group of people in in your own country. Uh, I just think that that's something that kids kids play together. They don't look at what color the other kid is. They don't. They don't judge you. The kid's drawing, you know. They say, oh, you do that? Let me draw this. Oh, let me show you what you could add to that drawing or, you know, uh, look at this thing I found. What do you think of this, you know? And, and comparing sure. in, in a positive way, I think that's something the kids naturally do. When we get older, 
you know, I can speak for myself as an artist or as an actor even, you know, the make-believe kids when they're playing, when they're five, six, seven years old, and they and they believe that they're cowboys or princesses or Robin Hood or, you know, Lakota Chiefs or whatever they're doing, or Superman or Iron Man, you don't have to direct them. You don't have to say, let's do another take because um, I didn't really believe that you were convinced yourself. It's that so joy of discovery. and, and it, uh, Yeah, and, and but as, as actors, when you're adult, you, you do need a director once in a while to say, I didn't believe that. Did you believe that? Well, no, you can do better. Come on. And, and it's because we get we get stiff, just like our muscles get stiff. You have to exercise your, your creative muscles, just like you have to exercise wow. your body. Well, yeah. Vigo Mortensen, uh, international uh, superstar, joins us. You know, I know a few people out in Hollywood, and they've all told me you are the most down-to-earth, cool person they know. You speak, what is it, six, seven languages? You're a writer, painter, a musician. I I've seen some of the amazing YouTube interviews you've done, and there's so much I want to ask you in the limited time. I want to get into the sequel, Rise of the Renegades, dealing with the insanity of what's happening with wild horses with you. But, but shifting gears, uh, the NSA, what do you make of the fact that just a few years ago, people would say, oh, it's a conspiracy theory that they're listening to us and now we learn they're targeting political dissidents uh aaron swartz was being harassed uh we're learning that they're using the irs against political groups uh do you think there's an awakening happening or do you think that uh now the system just doesn't care if we know that we're slaves basically vigo i think, yeah, I think that there is an awakening because all these things are being talked about right now today but you know people People have very short attention spans nowadays. You know, the more gadgets we have, the more phones and apps. And, and I mean, it started with the, the onslaught of cable TV way back when and then the Internet. And the more access we have, you would think the more informed we're going to be and the more connected we're going to be with each other. But people tend to go to the information that supports what they already believe. Yes. You know, and so people seem to get more. Uh, disunited rather than more united, unfortunately. And when I say short attention span, yeah, the whole stuff about the NSA or about, you know, the IRS, uh, about the drone strikes. I mean, how much are they talking about drone strikes right now? Not really at all. But like another fad that just went away in a news cycle. And I think it's, the problem is, and I think the politicians count on this, is that people can be, uh, you know, swayed. It's like, Here's a piece of cheese. Follow this piece of cheese and go over there and pay attention to that for a while while I take care of this other business. The problem with Obama, and I support a lot of things about him. I think he's a very intelligent man. I supported him both times. There wasn't really much of another option, obviously. But the, the thing is that the people that he appointed right to start at the beginning with in 2008, people he announced that were going to be part of fixing the you know, economic disaster that Bush left were the same people that had caused the problem on Wall Street, for example. So I didn't expect much there. His, his behavior in foreign policy, whether it be Iraq, Guantanamo, Afghanistan, you know, people still think that Afghanistan is a good war. It's, it's not any more of a good war than Iraq was. It's not any more of a sensible use of our resources and our, you know, young people's lives. And <laughs> and and, and the, you know the mur not to mention the, the sure. Well, what about Obama getting a peace prize uh, and, and then now putting Al Qaeda in Syria? That's ridiculous. I mean, his I, I, unfortunately, Obama's government has not really been much different than Bush's in a lot of areas, and not just in foreign policy. Foreign policy is the most egregious. You know, like if we go into if we go into Syria now to try to help get rid of Assad. People in the Arab world aren't going to say, oh, isn't that great? The U.S. is doing something good. Because the way they have seen the United States, the way they judge the United States is based on how they behave in the Israel-Palestine situation, the way they have behaved since 1948. And every single president, including Obama, has given special treatment to Israel. And that's obvious to Arab people. So it's going to be hard for us to be considered the good guy, which is something that our government and I think our people, we all want people to like us and think, oh, we're the good guys. We're the guys from World War II that handed out candy bars on the streets of Paris and, and Rome. 
You know, we're the guys with the Marshall Plan. People don't see us that way, unfortunately. We're, they see us as the bullies. It's not these Americans that are any nicer or less nice than other people in the world. We're just people. But our government, which represents us, absolutely has not, has not been a good player. Very rarely has been a good player overseas. Vigo you know, Mortensen is our is our guest. Uh, going back to the NSA here, uh, Peter King, uh, Dick Cheney, uh, others have called for his arrest. There's been news in the Daily Mail uh, where they're talking about killing him. I think that Snowden is a hero leaking the NSA info. Uh, Vigo uh, Mortensen, uh, uh, what would you like to say on that subject? I think he's definitely uh, a very brave person. I also think it's ironic that all the, uh, the the Bush team, you know, attack Obama and for instance Obama for doing exactly the same thing they were doing. You know, I mean, it's, it's pretty hypocritical that 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 behavior. I want to. I know this seems like you know a small thing, but it starts locally. You know, activism and oh, I and agree. Common common sense community. Activity. I have to say something about uh, additionally about the AMF on festival. Yeah, let's talk about that. Uh, which is that the mayor of uh, Cathedral City, uh, uh, Kathleen uh, De La Rosa, she uh, did something very clever. Or the government down there, or city council, whatever, they allowed a lot of buildings, and you know, would be as a consequence of what happened in 2008 with the economy and with real estate all over the country, uh, there was a lot of uh, retail space that had been built that, you know, businesses just left there. And there's all these empty space and a lot of communities. And what they did in Cathedral City is that they, they donated or gave very low rent to people who wanted to open galleries and art spaces. And those spaces down there are being used in a really good way. And it's not just that it's nice to look at or it's good to take the kids to see artwork. Well, that's what it, made New York it, the head of culture worldwide was in the 30s, them doing that. Exactly. And and that, that proactive uh, stance from the local government down in Cathedral City has not just made life richer for people, but it's also improved the economy. There's people opening you know, places to eat, there's, there's a lot of activity down there, rather than just being another uh, urban wasteland, you know. Well, that's what's that great thing. about what you do, Vigo, is is you're so down to earth and you, and you use your mind. You're obviously a really smart guy and, and also your celebrity to all over the world. You just go around actually trying to help people instead of just going to a photo op and doing it. And, and it's so exciting. Speaking of um, the uh, a new film, Rise of the Renegades, a sequel to Wild Horses and Renegades, you know, these beautiful horses out there. And I, and I saw in write-ups of the film, I want to see it, uh, and, and you're out there obviously promoting it, trying to bring attention to this, that they gave the horses who, to a guy who was going to take care of them and get them homes, who was a known horse meat guy. Uh, it's just ridiculous how, how transparent the government is. Your take on that. Well, it's a long story, and we probably don't have time for it, but I do recommend you see this movie uh, by James Kleiner. Um, the, the, the Bureau of Land Management and, uh, you know, government in Washington in general has not had a very good history with, with wild horses and burrows. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a lot of attention is being brought to the subject by this film, but also by a lot of other activists. Netta DeMaio is a woman who is tireless, probably has done more than anyone else on the subject. And it's, it's connected to a lot of other things. You know, a lot, one of the reasons that, <clears throat> that they want to get rid of these horses or what happened during the Bush years when, when Cheney was in charge of that was handing out free passes to corporations, whether it was legal or not, to go into protected areas where these horses are to to um, extract resources and building roads where you weren't allowed to build roads. And the judicial system was so clogged up with all these violations that they these people knew that they could go in there and wreak havoc on our public land, which belonged to all Americans. Um, and that it would take years for them to be processed, and they could extract the resources, ruin the place, and move on, and probably later settle out of court or something. You know, it, it's a big problem. There's a lot of 
issues involved. It's not just about protecting wild horses, which is a great thing in itself. Um, so folks I, need I to see the them. film. Uh, you know, we're going I to... to see, I encourage people to see the film and just, just put Google, put wild horses or wild horses preservation. Um, you know, do a little homework, you know. That's the great thing about the Internet. If you use it wisely, you can learn a lot of things. I mean, I learn things every day from it. Um, but, you know, as far as the news, the things that you talk about on your program all the time, you know, your listeners will often, I'm sure, be surprised that, really, that's what's going on? And then they'll go look it up. When I say that people tend to go to what they already know, it's what they do. You know, you go look at the news from, about your sports team, not other well, sports Well, Vigo, teams. my broadcast... Uh, you know, you'll listen to CNN or to Fox, or you'll listen to and uh, watch MSNBC or, or whatever. You'll listen to your show only. Vigo, you were offered the part of Zod and didn't take it? I wasn't available at the time. Unfortunately, it probably would have been a lot of fun to play that part. Although I have a lot of respect for Terrence Stamps' portrayal, i got to say. Oh, yeah. I saw him in, in uh, The Iceman chilling. He's an incredible actor. Mm, he's very good. Yeah, you can't do everything. You know, you just try to follow your instincts. And, and you know, my philosophy is uh, prepare the best you can for accidents to happen because they always will. Um, and something good can come out of an obstacle always if you're... Oh, who you're knows? Ready. Absolutely. But but I would love to see you see you play a villain. I mean, I've seen you play like mobsters trying to be reformed and things. Have I missed a film where you're a villain? Um, well, I played Lucifer once in a movie called The Prophecy. That's that right. I saw that. <laughs> Chris Walken. Yeah, that's a good no, movie. Um, you never know. I mean, you just uh, I just try to follow my nose, you know, if I, if I like a story, I'll go do it. I don't really think about the budget or or where it's being shot or anything. And, you know, fortunately, since I can speak more than one language, I've been able to work the uh, last couple of years. I did two really interesting movies down in Argentina, one that came out recently here called Everyone Has a Plan, where I played twin brothers who don't like each other very much. That was an interesting <laughs> kind of thriller. And, uh, you know, I'm going to go do a movie that but in a very interesting... Have you ever seen the movie called Battle of Algiers by Ponte Corvo? I love that movie. It's almost like a documentary. You're watching exactly. it and you think it's real. Yeah, it's unbelievable. It's set during the uh, fight for independence in Algeria from, from France, which has been a colonial occupier for 130 years. And uh, imagine if the United States had stayed in Iraq for 130 years straight. That's how fed up the people were there but it was a it's a comp it was a complicated subject anyway there's a movie that's uh being shot that takes place during that period uh late 50s in uh in north africa this fall and i'm back in that one and uh but i got to bone up a little because i have to speak uh, french i can't there, but i can't <laughs> wait to see that uh, well I, I hope it gets over here the problem is those little movies have a hard time getting this over here but you know i figure if you do your best, you do a good job, eventually it'll get seen somewhere. Well, we're seeing a resurgence of art house films because of more of so the smaller theaters. I just love it. Uh, moving quickly, because I know you've got to go, Bob Anderson, uh, the the greatest uh, swordmaster ever who died last year, said you were the greatest swordsman he ever trained. And I think he said not just in movies. Uh, I mean, how good are you with a sword, Vigo? Well, I'm probably a little rusty now, but that was that's high praise coming from Bob Anderson. He's a he's a legend in in uh, in Swordmaster circles. He was something else. He was you know he was he's been in movies. He, he was in the Olympics. That's how he started out as a you know a, he was a fencing champion and uh, a great person. He was he was an incredible teacher. Very strict sometimes, but he had a good sense of humor and. Uh, he was tough, but he was fair, and uh, I learned a lot from him. He's the one who who taught me to do all the fighting for Lord of the Rings. That's where I met him, and then I subsequently did a, a period movie, a big uh, Spanish epic, 17th century, where we fought with uh, with two blades, you know, with rapier and dagger. And, and that was, that was so bottom time. line, don't, don't get in a knife fight with Vigo Mortensen. I want to give out... <laughs> Uh, the name of your publishing company, uh, where you also publish a lot of photos, articles, videos, things you're doing. I've, I've been to the site before. So many great uh, things on there. It's uh, Percival Press. 
com, and we'll email that out uh, at the Real Alex Jones uh, on Twitter. Going back to what you said right before the break, and then I've got one other question, and I'll let you get out of here, Vigo. You're sure. real sweetheart to come on with us. Your busy schedule. You were talking about getting outside the box. Google admits they now and YouTube tries to keep you in what they think you're you, uh, you like. And they admit to balkanize the population. And, 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 and I agree with you. The greatest solution. How do they do, how do, they do that? Uh, they take what your surfing history already is. And they admit uh, then if you're searching or on YouTube or anything they own, then they try to keep you uh, on a digital plantation of only what you're already into. Hmm. Yeah, you got to. It's true that you have to push yourself. Uh, you know, I mean, it's the same as getting off the couch and at least going for a walk, you know. It's not, it's not always the first thing you want to do. You'd maybe rather stay on the couch and eat another bag of chips. But, but it's, you know it's good for you to get out and go for a run or go for a walk or go talk to somebody, you know, get off the phone, get, a, get away from the TV and so forth once in a while or, or regularly. And it's the same with looking for, if you're curious about what's going on in your community and what's going on in the world, you got to make an extra effort. You know, go listen to people and read people that you probably that you know you probably won't agree with, just to get the other side of it. Make up your own mind because the left, the right, all all all, all journalists, all commentators have their spin, have their motivation. Get out of the rut. Get out of the rut. Yeah, Expand. Yeah, make up your own mind, but you got to make an effort. It's not just going to be handed to you by a computer without you making an effort to go look elsewhere. You know? Wow, Vigo, amazing. Uh, in closing, uh, I, most horror movies, I'm not a horror fan. I like science fiction that has some you know, violence in it or whatever, just because that makes it more real. But yeah. uh, since I was a child, no movies have scared me. And I've seen movies before that are you know are action adventure, and I'll want to watch them again. The Road touched me like no other <laughs> film I've ever seen and because I've studied history and things and had some experiences, it's so real. And, and, and I know within 10 days, most people become cannibals in Pentagon mm -hmm. studies. In closing, that's a film that I am physically uh, afraid to mm -hmm. watch again because of almost the ancestral fears that it rises. And what if there's a nuclear war? What of our atmosphere? What if, what mm -hmm. if uh, uh, the road? What can you say about that? Well, it's true. It's a, it's a harrowing experience to watch it, but it's also beautifully made. And John oh, Hill directed directed that movie, and, and John did a, a great job with a tough subject matter. And uh, the boy in it, Cody Smigny, who's now uh, he's over six feet tall. He's a, he's a man now, but he was he was fantastic in that in that movie. And it's, it's unfortunate that at, at the last minute they decided not to distribute it as widely as they were going to, but. Like I say, good work eventually gets seen, and, and a lot of people on the street, as many people uh, comment on that movie as they do on the other movie, uh, they really, it really touch the nerve. And uh, it's, it's kind of, like you say, it's, um, it's a good warning in a way. It's like, if we don't want to end up that way, you got to take an action. Well, the most uh, touching part is, in closing, is when Robert Duvall, you and your son are there, and he explains that boy's a god in this ugly, destroyed world. He doesn't say that, but that's what I got in the poetry of it, yeah. is that this youth, this energy, the creativity, the green shoots in a dead world, If children are our future. And, mm. uh, I mean, what did you take away uh, by that writing? Yeah, it's beautiful. I mean, it's, <clears throat> I would paraphrase in a way what he was saying, or what, how I would put it, is uh, children are God. Pay attention. That doesn't mean spoil your, your kid, or it doesn't mean you're talking specifically about the kid, but remember what you felt when you were a kid. Remember your creative instincts. Remember your instincts for peace. Remember your instincts for fellowship and for making something beautiful out of life, not destroying the world and not destroying the lives of others, you know, as adults often do, unfortunately. So remember, kids. Remember yourself as a kid, and you're going to be on the right track. Wow, Vigo Mortensen, you are a beautiful person, and I hope to meet you someday in person. God bless you for sharing your time with us and for trying to help humanity. You're an example to us all, and I look forward to speaking to you again. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Vigo. Wow, uh, that was a powerful interview.
that is really amazing. And, and it's, it's amazing to know that we've touched Vigo, you know, that he listens to the show. Uh, and it's just another example of, you know, how many amazing people there are out there that know what's happening. I, I, I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, I've read too many accounts of war and collapsed society, seeing something like The Road. That movie is, is it's like Godfather 1, where it's like it's real. Or, or uh, The Battle for Algiers, he mentioned. You watch that and you think it's a documentary. It's done so good. Uh, and, and there's parts of Godfather where it's not magic like that. The road is magic from the start to the end. And Vigo is a artist. A great interview right there. It's uh, very encouraging to see people awake and not only awake, but willing to stand on their principles because we hear that there are many people uh, who are allegedly awake and interested in these type of issues, but they don't want to talk about it for political reasons or they think it's going to impact their next film. But this guy comes out and he says, hey, I'm awake and I want everybody to know about this, as many of my fans as possible. So uh, definitely appreciate you, Mr. Morrison, taking time to be with us. And we'll look forward to you being back on the show in the future. Now stay tuned right after this break because I'll be talking to Mike Cargill. Now you can watch the InfoWars nightly news streaming live as it happens for free. Check it out at infowars.com forward slash show.